I want to play Terraria. Now I'm fighting a god, and if I lose, my channel gets deleted. Because last week, this link looks safe. Password compromised. Account deletion in progress. Brother, you've gotten hacked. Dear Dragoon, I, MicroStrategy US, have taken over your channel. You promised you'd beat the final boss in Terraria Inferno mode. That was months ago. You will only get your channel back once you complete it. Good luck. So an hour ago, I made a new world, and here is what happened when I fought the first boss. I heard that the boss is a small worm. I was wrong. To survive, I'll have to dodge everything. I didn't dodge everything. It's fine, I have plenty of health. I'll use my secret technique. Alt tabbing out of the game so it freezes. I can never die now. All right, fine. I'll explain how I got here. When I started the new world, it let me look at my stats. Damage, zero. Luck, zero. Value to society, negative 12. So I asked the guide how to get stronger. This world is ruled by King Yaren. You can never win. But if you wanted to try, you would need three things. Strong gear, learning to dodge, and sheer fucking will. Just stay away from the corruption. Alright then, since Inferno Mode has the strongest bosses in Terraria, it's good that I get a starting bag. It gave me a pet squirrel that I'm calling Roberto, and a magical staff that I used to kill a rabbit because Roberto told me to. Because I want to focus on beating the bosses, I got mods to build a house for me. I need the extra time to learn this strange term I've never heard before. Dodging? But first I need strong gear. The first strong gear I'll get is gold armor, so I need to mine gold that spawns in natural caves. So I I went to find a natural cave, but instead a robot flew from a lake and attacked me. In this mode, I have to be wary of everything. Look out for that blade of grass. Killing it dropped wolf from shards, which I crafted into a treasure pinger. The pinger told me there is treasure beneath the sand. This could be the gold I'm looking for. Oh god, a slime is attacking me. And a vulture. And another slime. Damn it, what do I do? It's turning night and zombies are coming. I have no one to help me, except Roberto. Throw an acorn. Me and Roberto slayed our enemies and I returned to get my treasure which was two copper ore. For those of you who aren't chemists, that is not gold. Then a zombie jumped in my hole and I died. I respawned and explored through the night, but I'm a little lost. Is this a cave? Nope, it's the corruption. Why did the guide tell me not to go here? I am in a precarious position. I wonder how to get down. Oh, that's how. There's probably water at the bottom, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's water. I told you not to go there. There's a great beast. I'm off exploring. I found the desert again, and there's a bed here. I wonder who lives here. And if I go further to the right, my favorite thing is here. The corruption. So, there are zero natural caves to my left or right. I'll have to make one myself. In 1970, the Russians began digging the Kola Super Deep Borehole, a tunnel that went straight down for 12,000 meters. Workers on the surface reported sounds of screaming, intense heat, and signs of delirium as if they had dug into hell itself. So that's what I'm going to do here. I need gold to beat the bosses. Oh wait, there's a cave I can just explore. There's a house under here with a golden chest. After a bit more digging, I found another house. Multiple people must have lived underground, but they seem to be abandoned. And in this chest, I got a cloud in a bottle. An accessory that lets me double jump, something that will help me dodge. I got tired of digging, but I still want to go down further, so I started using bombs to dig for me. I want the Russians to send bombs into hell to see what happens. I have engaged a jellyfish in combat, a creature with no brain. It would be embarrassing if I lost. That's alright, I respawn in my home and can take out my anger on the NPCs for my failures. I need better gear, so I went back down and used my treasure pinger to discover there is loot and ore everywhere. If you thought this was gonna be useless, unsubscribe. Just like 6,000 people unsubscribed when my channel was hacked and replaced with a Bitcoin livestream. With the treasure pinger's help, I did a bunch more mining, organizing, and crafting. I now have golden armor, a golden bow, and flaming arrows. I think I'm ready to fight the first boss. And we already know how that went. I died. So I went back to the guide. Why did I lose? I should be strong enough now. Ah, 2,000 years ago, Yarim took this land and gave the evil creatures more power. No one has been able to fight him. Except, there were rumors of a resistance, calling themselves the final stand, but they only accept worthy members. So you probably need to learn to dodge, you moron. Oh yeah. I started building an arena to give me more room to move and dodge. The platforms let me jump up and down through them, cloud in a bottle for double jump, and I have a grappling hook that pulls me to the platform. I'm ready for my second attempt. I jumped over it, dodged and weaved. Then it started sending projectiles. I got distracted and was hit by the worm's body, but I just have to dodge the head. The head deals three times more damage than anything else. I got hit by the head. 
at least now I can reflect on what I did wrong and improve. Or I could immediately try again, using my sheer fucking will. If you don't like swearing, unsubscribe. Maybe if I get to zero subscribers, MicroStrategy will leave my channel alone. I died in seven seconds this time. Third time is the charm! Four seconds. I lasted four seconds, which is totally average. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I keep getting hit. I'm not dodging enough. Why not? I just hate the feeling of getting hit. I get scared of failing. I think I'm panicking with all this pressure on me. The only way I could dodge is if I stop thinking. I did that once before with the melody harp in Hypixel Skyblock. I played aggressively loud music to drown out my thoughts and just focus on the game. Maybe that's a mental problem, but if hardstyle music Music is the solution. I'm okay with it. And so my next fight with the boss sounded like this. I wasn't able to hear my own thoughts, so I was dodging the boss better, my grappling hook evading every dash from the worm. By the way, I know this video is still not a sequel to the Terraria experience everyone wanted, but if I'm going to finally beat Terraria, I'm doing it on the hardest difficulty. That actually went better. I survived for a whole minute. Distracting my brain worked. So I kept trying again and again. I died 11 times in a row, but on my 12th attempt, this happened. I just have to jump over this book. I was not even close. I can usually dodge the boss for about two minutes now, but I just don't deal enough damage. So we go back to step one, get stronger gear. I threw myself into the hellhole because right now I have 100 max health. You can get a max of 400 health by finding and eating a life crystal. Remember the treasure pinger? Well, this is not him now. This is the Spelunker potion. You drink a strange liquid and you can see all treasure, ores, and life crystals for 10 minutes. And this is before side effect labels were invented, so it's completely safe. I was focused on finding more crystals. So focused that I forgot that breathing was mandatory. I don't trust water anymore. After a lot more mining, I got out of hell with triple the health I had before. A stronger bow made of demonite and arrows forged from the stars themselves. These arrows pierce through enemies and since the worm is made up of multiple segments, the arrows can hit the worm multiple times. I was dodging the boss. He brought a friend to shoot water at me, but I already know water is deadly. Stop drinking it! While fighting, this rage meter fills up. Once full, I can unleash my rage and deal double damage for a short time. This bar is adrenaline. It builds up when I don't get hit for 30 seconds. If you ever see this fall, I've actually gotten good at dodging. It's on half health, but it's spawning sand tornadoes. I'm being chased off the platform. No, please. Damn it, I still can't win, but I can't give up. I have to try again. Wait, there's a goblin here. I was about to try the boss again, but an army of goblins has just raided my house. Goblin mages, warriors, and rogues were attacking me, and they were all chanting the same thing. We are the are they talking about Yarim? I have to kill them. Jester arrows actually are super effective against the goblins. I was hitting six of them at once. Technically not a boss, but I'm getting close to beating a single boss on this mode. And there are 47 bosses, god damn it. I just want to beat the desert scourge. So I went back to the desert. Hmm, the goblins dropped some spiky balls. I wonder if they deal much damage. I'll try them against the boss. What? It just did a thousand damage in a second. So that's good. Spiky balls remain on the platform after I throw them, and they do damage to every segment of the worm. It was nearly dead. No, damn it! It was so close! But I can definitely beat it now. I just have to use the spiky balls. Oh, I only have 50 left. That's not enough. Except, not all the goblins are gone. The goblin army had one prisoner, the goblin tinkerer. He was tied up and trapped somewhere in the underground world, and if I find him, he will sell me spiky balls. So I entered my favorite hole and went to exploring. But after fighting enemies, mining gems, I still couldn't find him, so I went back and asked the guide. Ah, the goblin tinkerer. I remember him. He claimed to be a mystic. He spoke of a future without Yarim, but that's what got him tied up in the first place. I have to find him, for his knowledge on defeating Yarim, and for his spiky balls. But I struggled. I looked everywhere. I even found an underground ocean. What is this? But I cannot find the goblin tinkerer anywhere. So plan B, I'm going to intentionally cause the goblin army to attack me again so that I can take their balls. You can summon the goblin army with the goblin battle standard. To get this, I have to kill a goblin scout that only spawns on the edge of the map. 
So this requires running across the entire world, through the corruption, the desert, sunflowers, a second corruption. I made it to the North Pole. Oh, there's another abandoned house here. Where is everyone? I went into the basement and found a written note. Dear anyone, the final stand has lost countless lives to the witch's pet. We realize we cannot defeat the creature, so instead we've made a plan to distract it. Then I will sneak into the dungeon to recover the Book of Tyranny, Kyra. That note was from the final stand. They can help me defeat Yari. I have to find them. But to do that, I have to beat the first boss. So back to searching for goblins. I battled polar bears. I climbed gigantic trees. I adopted two fairies and helped them find true love. I went past a dungeon. Is this what the letter was talking about? I'm not ready for this, so I kept going. I am now at the edge of the world. But after going back and forth for a while, no goblins spawned. And then I saw that the ocean on this side was polluted by acid. For goblin scouts to spawn, we need a clean ocean. So I have to run back to do all of this in the other direction. If only terraria worlds were round. So I ran through the other corruption. The jungle had leeches. Remember, this is all for some spiky balls. And finally, I am at the beach. A calm, beautiful ocean with goblin. No, I still don't know where they are. And there's also a bed here already. Why is no one living in these houses? I decided to check the ocean. Yep, there is a lot of water here. But still no goblin scouts are spawning. So, we are on to plan C, which is actually plan A. Find the goblin tinkerer. But, just as there is a potion that reveals treasure, there is a potion that shows life forms, like the Goblin Tinkerer telling me if he's nearby. But to create that potion, I need shark fins. So I removed the ability for fish to be endangered by exterminating all of them, and went home with a shark fin. Time to make a hunter potion to find the Goblin Tinkerer to buy his overpriced spiky balls to kill the first boss in Infernum so that I can help the final stand kill the final boss to get my channel back. That was hacked. Does all of that make sense? Oh, I don't have blink root. I need blink root to make the potion. Back to the hole for me. The good news is blink roots flash yellow so they're easy to see. The bad news is I saw zero of them. Wow, I think I may have actually dug to hell or at least to lava. I have dug to the earth's crust and on this journey found one blink root. The bad news is tonight is a blood moon. Every creature goes insane with bloodlust. My house is completely filled with enemies trying to kill me and my family of NPCs that I care so much about that I haven't talked about a single one of them yet. I spent most of the night sitting here and shooting downward. There are a hundred enemies on my screen, but only one that can climb ropes. Don't skip arm day. Zombies, do the jump trick. Perfect. Yes, just like we practiced. And in the morning, they were gone. I am ready to craft the potion. I just gotta put down a bottle. The bottle doesn't fit on the workbench. Let me grab a table and destroy my house real quick, then place a bottle, and now I can craft a hunter potion. I also grabbed a mining potion to mine faster. And once again, began my hunt for the elusive goblin Goblin Tinkerer into the hellhole, baby. You can see enemies around the place glowing red when I normally couldn't see them, but I'm ignoring them all completely. I only have six minutes of this potion, then it's gone. I don't want to fight another shark. Where is he? Wait, it's green. Yes, there he is. All right. I never would have gotten here without the potion. This is a sealed pocket. How did you get here? Can you move in 3D? Hello, are you the Goblin Tinkerer of the Final Stand? Hello, yes I am, but I prefer the title Goblin Mystic. Have you met our leader, Magnus? No, who is that? He's the most powerful of us all. He has a unique ability. But anyway, I assume Kyra sent you to get me. Ah, uh, no. But I found a letter, she's battling the witch's pet? It doesn't seem to be going well. Oh god, Skeletron. Created by Supreme Witch Calamitous. Yarim's strongest weapon. That's interesting and all, but... Do you have spiky balls? He does. I bought 400 of them, so I can now craft an endless supply of spiky balls to defeat the first boss. He also sells rocket boots, so now I can fly around a bit, dodging attacks even more easily. We are in the desert for the 50th time. I have rocket boots and spiky ass balls. I am ready for the desert scourge. Let's go. I dodged the first run, the second, the third, and he had lost a third of his health. God damn. I was still getting hit a bit, but I dealt more damage than him. And then, Desert Scourge, from this earth you will never again emerge. I killed it, finally. I killed a single boss 
on Infernum mode. It may have taken me five hours, but if I can beat one, I can beat them all. So I'm going straight to the next boss, back to the corruption. If I destroy enough things here, the Guardian of the Corruption comes to stop me. The Eater of Worlds. The only problem is it's in the corruption and there is no room to dodge underground. What am I supposed to do here? How could I dodge that? Am I at least dealing a lot of damage? Um, um, it has more health than can fit on the screen. Its health is outside its health bar. What? So I lost. To be fair, Eater of Worlds is technically the third boss. The second is the Eye of Cthulhu. I'm just a bit scared of that because of a conversation I had with the guide. Millions of years ago, Cthulhu fought in the War of Gods and defeated the God of Light, creator of the universe, Xerox. Oh, that's what they say. Shouldn't you be learning to dodge? So poking the eye of a creature that killed God seems like a bad idea. But I have to beat Terraria to get my channel back, so if I'm going to beat Cthulhu's eye, I need a proper arena. And to make an arena, I need life crystals. So I went mining, met a giant clam in the underground ocean, it proceeded to teleport three times and crush me. But by then, I had enough materials to craft the Insta Arena. Instead of spending 10 hours building an arena myself, I got a mod to do it for me. Now I am ready to fight bosses. And so I summoned the Eye of Cthulhu. I made a weapon that throws bombs at enemies, and it's going alright, until the eye opened and revealed its teeth. Did you know all eyes actually have teeth? Try giving people's eyes snacks, they will thank you. It circled around me and charged in. It was almost half health, but my dodging wasn't perfect. I used my grappling hook to try and dodge. Come on! You may have killed God, but you haven't killed... God, bro, and... No, it doesn't work. And then I used my grappling hook badly and died. So I talked to the guide. I saw you freed the goblin mystic. I gave him a room here. Though he's constantly having nightmares, he's sweating and screaming. The god will return! The god will return! But I'm sure that's fine. Now go fight Cthulhu's eye. We need you. Um, okay, but I need something stronger to fight it. I don't want to die again. Wait, again? Are you saying you've died before? Do you have the ability to respawn? Yeah, I thought everyone here did. No, definitely not. That's very interesting. Mm. I have something that may help you win. A gun! I can now shoot the eye to deal more damage. I got him to half health again before I died to not dodging. Ironically, the best item in the game for dodging drops from the Eye of Cthulhu. And now it's daytime, I can only summon the boss at night. So before the next night, I have a quest. To get 8% more movement speed. You see, I combined the rocket boots with Hermes boots to create Spectre boots, allowing me to move fast and fly. But there is an upgrade, Lightning boots, which grants 8% bonus move speed. It could help me dodge more attacks. But to craft them, I need jungle spores and clouds. So I went to find clouds. I continued up. I found something. It looks like a giant laboratory. So other people have definitely been here. Oh, is this a hologram? What is this? Access denied. Radon has been notified of your arrival. That's probably fine. Then I jumped off and was falling to my death until I reversed gravity. These potions are really strong. I found a cloud and mined it up. Then I went to the jungle to get spores. But what I found was a gigantic open area, beautifully crafted bridges and buildings overrun with jungle creatures. There used to be an entire civilization down here, but I'll explore it later. For now, I have the spores. I went home and finally crafted the lightning boots. I am slightly faster. Tell me I don't look cool. You can't. You just can't. And there's one more thing I can do before the next boss fight. Remember potions? They give you a buff for a short amount of time. A lot of gameplay in Terraria is usually grinding random materials to craft potions. But I downloaded a mod that means if I get 30 potions, it just gives me the buff forever. So I've been planting daybloom flowers on the side until I had 30 of them to craft 30 iron skin potions, giving 8 defense. I now forever take 8 less damage per attack. So with more move speed and defense, I went back to gunning down evil creatures that do not exist. It was taking forever. He's launching other enemies at me. No, that was much better. I tried again and I was surrounded by the big eye and the small eyes. So I ducked between them and <gasps> that did not hit me. Cool. I kept dodging and shooting until finally he was less than 100 health. But off the platform, I couldn't reach him. But someone could. Roberto! Got the last hit and I won the fight. And I got the equipment that lets me dodge better than any other. The Shield of Cthulhu allows me to dash once per second. 
I'm back at the acid ocean. I killed a lot of frogs, then I fell into the acidic ocean. It was not very healthy. The reason that I did this is because I can craft sulfurous armor out of the acid, which increases my rogue damage. Rogue damage is for throwing things like spiky balls or this giant sand spear. So with this armor, I can probably maybe kill the Eater of Worlds. I went back to the corruption, but decided to fight it above ground this time. It is immediately enraged when I do this and much stronger than the underground version, but I need this space to dodge. How does a worm with no arms shoot so many projectiles? At least with the lightning boots and shield I can dodge a lot easier. Again, I mainly have to dodge the head attacks. The head was coming toward me, about to deal insane damage, but I dashed directly into the head using my shield and bounced off it, dealing damage to the worm. The shield of Cthulhu's dash counts as a shield bash attack, taking no damage myself. Very useful. Oh my god, I can actually see the health bar now. It comes into the screen slowly. It's almost dead. I'm going to win the third boss. Wait, no, it has max health. And there are two of them now. Fun. Very, very fun. I went home and did some trading with my NPCs to give myself infinite swiftness potions and regeneration potions. At least I can summon this boss at any time of day. I tried using the bomb this time to see if it does more damage, but it's hard to tell when its health is off the screen. All right, first health bar gone. Ready to fight two of them at once. It's going well, actually. I'm learning the patterns. Go in a circle, dash a lot. In fact, my adrenaline bar is slowly filling up. I haven't been hit in ages. If I activate it, I get double damage, stacking with rage it'll deal in set nope never mind i'm down to regular health come on is this the real end of the fight nope there are four of them now am i doing something wrong the dodging is getting more difficult oh they summon toxic rain clouds that are undodgeable cool i died how did I beat the other worm? Of course, spiky balls. Why did I ever doubt them? So I got my spiky balls, turned on my music, and went back to the corruption. Nothing will stop me this time. The spiky balls tore through it. Already up to four worms and 560 projectiles on the screen, still at full health. Damn it, I can't dodge everything. But I can't stop now, come on. I'm going to win, I'm ready for eight worms. And this will continue for infinity. 16 worms, 32, 64, until we reach more worms than there are atoms in the universe. Oh no, I just died. Yes! I beat the Eater of Worlds. And so I got confident that I can beat the harder corruption boss right now. I summoned the Hive Mind. I got these new weapons called Sludge Bombs, but they're super hard to aim and I keep missing. Oh God, I have to really start dodging now. Coming from both sides, ah, damn it. It's half health though, it's working, I'm winning. I'm close on my first try. Man, Infernomage, oh, he healed his health. Why would you do that? Now it's raining acid. And I gotta dodge more and the sky is darker and he's whispering nightmare fuel into my ear. Strawberries aren't actually berries. Horrible stuff. It's fine, I just gotta dodge, easy peasy. Nope. Why am I not getting this? What am I doing wrong? I can't beat the hive mind. Oh, the hive mind. That's the creature that created the corruption. He used to be a human scientist that lived deep in the underground, but an experiment went wrong and he turned into that thing. He ended up killing his own people. It was awful. Oh, is that why so many of the houses are empty? I have to try again. Wait, there's a bar under my player that builds up when I don't attack. Maybe I should let it build up and then attack. Holy shit, that dealt 500 damage. So, rogue lesson. Not attacking for five seconds builds up stealth. Stealth increases damage by a lot. You aren't supposed to spam click as rogue. You're supposed to wait until the perfect moment to hit your huge attack. I deal so much more damage now. And that's when I realized something that no one has ever realized because I'm a genius. Patience is a virtue. You can quote me on that. I beat the hive mind. Finally, I feel like I'm getting better. I can get my channel back. I might be ready to fight the witch's pet, Skeletron. So in the black of night, I approached the dungeon. At the entrance was an old man. Hey, have you seen a skeleton god that kills anyone who wants to enter? Hello! I have not much time. Kyra gave me this. Is this a letter? Do I read it? You run! It says, um, oh shit. Life lesson. Listen to old wise men. When I'm 60, subscribe, but not until then. At least I now get to fight the boss, Skeletron. He shoots skulls at me, but I look really cool now. My eyes are glowing red as I dash along. Oh, uh, no, stop it. I'm dying and I'm dealing hardly any damage. I lost. It could be because my hardstyle music wasn't loud enough, or it could be that I didn't prepare at all. And I can prepare more, because when the hive mind died, some of the corrupt power of the world lessened, and I can now mine aerialite ore from Sky Islands, unlocking a new armor set. So I got that, 
and started attacking Skeletron again. In regular Terraria, he just chases you. In Inferno mode, he pulls out this Toho attack and launches 100 projectiles at you. Luckily, Inferno mode added a way to summon Skeletron anywhere at any time. So I can now die anywhere at any time. At least I get to use my arena. But more importantly, that aerial at ore meant I can craft wings. I can fly now. This is insanely useful. They are only very weak wings that run out quickly. You can see the flight time in this bar. I tried again. I was on full health. It was going well. Oh god! 91,000 damage! I need more defense. So, Skeletron is scared of the sun. If it turns day at 4.30am, he enrages and insta-kills me. I have to kill him between 7.30pm and 4.30am, or else that happens. So I started the fight earlier, and I now have a weapon that the wiki recommends to all classes. A homing firework that explodes and deals one damage? Don't trust the wiki. Also, technically the next boss I'm up to isn't Skeletron, it's Queen Bee. I just wanted to save Kyra. So instead I went to the jungle, and made some platforms to beat an easier boss, the Queen Bee. I used my javelin with its stealth damage, and missed most of my shots, and got hit by every bee attack. I'm starting to not like bees. Maybe it's okay that they're going extinct. We can start eating plastic instead of food. I can't fight the queen bee anywhere at any time, only in the jungle. So I made another insta arena, and took it to the jungle. It'll be a lot easier to fight the bee above ground in my arena that's in the jungle. Wait, I accidentally right clicked. My arena is now here. The jungle is here. My arena is just somewhere random in the sky. That's all right, I can just build a staircase in the jungle, summon the queen bee, and jump off the staircase to get to the platform. Nope, I'm too low, I gotta try again. While dodging it. Ah, come on, yes, yes, I'm up! Now I can kill the bee with my one damage fireworks. The wiki said this was good! It's been a while, but it's still dealing damage, and I'm managing to dodge most of the attack. I think if this keeps up, I'll be fine. Okay, there are bees spawning right next to me. How can I dodge that? That's impossible. There are bees everywhere. I am one hit from dead. Come on. Huh? Queen Bee is no longer after you. What happened? I ran too far away. It despawned because it thought I ran away. I'm not allowed to get too far from the bosses, or they get bored and leave. But still, I need more damage to beat it. Oh, I should probably read that letter the old man gave me. Dear anyone, I've invaded the dungeon successfully, but I can't risk trying to escape while Skeletron is still alive. But I found the Book of Tyranny. It speaks of a weapon that can defeat Skeletron. It's called the Bladecrest Oath Sword. Yarum gave it to the hive mind to guard. We have to find a way to communicate with it, to find out where it's been hidden. Kyra, we have a way of beating Skeletron, but I killed the only creature that knows where the weapon is. Huh. Hey guide, um, you got an idea where the hive mind is from? Not right now. I have to help the goblin mystic. He's going crazy. Ah, you, you may defeat Yarim, <gasps> but the god will return. You <coughs> will go to hell. That's rude. Now, <coughs> go to hell. The sword. The sword. Does he mean the blade crest? I guess I can check it out. I am going to do what the Russians were too afraid to do. I am expanding the hole. After digging 13,000 meters, I am finally in hell itself, complete with demons and lava. But before the Oath Sword, I want Hellstone Armor, the strongest armor I can get right now. So I drank an obsidian skin potion, making me immune to lava, and scoured the depths of hell for ore. I had demons shooting fire at me, but I wasn't stopping until I had thousands of ore. After 10 minutes, I had all the Hellstone I needed. But to craft molten armor, I also needed obsidian, created from lava meeting water. But there's no water near hell. I'm struggling to find any obsidian. What do I do? There just isn't any. Water has gone extinct. And that's good. It's very dangerous. Unless, wait a second. I have an idea. You guys remember the underground ocean? I'm digging it, destroying it, so that water flows down. I am flooding hell with the underwater ocean. <laughs> well, I only need a bit of obsidian. So I got it and then left. I'll flood the rest of hell later. With molten armor, I have much more defense. I decided to test it on Skeletron. I was using the firework when Skeletron pulled out this attack. That just seems impossible to dodge. And so I died. Damn it, why am I not getting this? Why do I keep losing? I just need more damage. I need the Bladecrest Oath Sword Kyra talked about. After listening to more mad ravings of the Goblin Tinkerer, I learned that the hive mind lived in the underworld when he was a scientist. He became a monster to fight a threat to his people. He won the battle, but in his 
new form, he raged and killed his own people. He hated himself, corrupting the land. It was a mercy that I ended his life. His old home was on the very edge of hell. So you know when I had to run across the entire world and almost died 16 times? Well now I have to do that again, but this time demons and lava are everywhere. And my anti-lava potion is out of duration. Huh, what's that? Another laboratory? Who made this? It's like the one in the sky, and inside is another hologram. Dragon has labeled you a potential threat. I should leave. I kept going, and the trees started looking strange. In fact, there were no trees before. Is this the hive mind's homeland? The lava changed color. Wait, I mean, cleansed site, the profaned garden. I don't think this is it. I can't break any of the blocks. Where am I? Oh god, a burning orange light. Am I supposed to dodge this? Is it a boss? Oh, an item dropped. The Wayfinder. Yep. Hmm. Okay, so... Holy shit! This is a teleportation device. I can set a portal where I am and return here at any time. This is the greatest discovery I've made. Did the people at the lab make it? This whole place looks crazy. I walked to the center and found a tablet. It looks like a shrine. Three disciples, one mind, one deity, one purpose. Tempered by the holy flames of providence. An ancient artifact is crystallized with the sole purpose of initiating the ritual at the cliff of this temple. That's sick! I kept going to the right and there is a temple with a crystal wall blocking it. On one hand, this is the coolest thing I've seen in the entire game. On the other hand, this is not the hive mind's home. So now I have to explore hell in the exact opposite direction. I made it. This must be the remnants of his home, but I'm being attacked by demons. If I die, I have to walk all the way back. Wait, I can use the Wayfinder. I held it and set a portal right here, then went home. Now I can activate it immediately, and I am right back. This is amazing. I killed the enemies, and deep within the ground, I found buried the Blade Crest Oath Sword. I can now defeat Skeletron, rescue Kyra, join the final stand to defeat Yarim, and get my channel back. But I want to test it on the Queen Bee first. It shoots homing circles of fire that count as melee damage, so I can focus only on dodging. This time when it got to half health and bees started coming, I stayed near the Queen Bee so it doesn't despawn. I managed to dodge most of them. Then the real heart attack came, where they spawned right next to me, but I stayed close and just focused on dodging. It exploded in pollen, gaining speed it hit me twice in a row. Dodging is way harder now. I'm nearly dead, but so is the bee. I'm flying in a circle, hoping now. Oh god, they are spawning close to me. One hit and I'm dead. It's easy. Simply do not get hit. Simply win. Just win. It charged me. I dashed the wrong way, but it was still mid-dash so the collision bounced off. Then it came back just in time to dash again for two blocked hits. It's so nearly dead. Come on, just some more dodging. Remember your training. You're not allergic to bee stings. Queen Bee, from this life, I set you free. It died, yes! And none of the items it dropped are at all useful to me. But the confidence it gave me, that is what I will use to conquer Skeletron. But then I died to Skeletron. Again, and again intentionally. Every time I die, I drop a gravestone. When 20 gravestones are in close proximity, a gravestone biome is created, and you need to be inside a gravestone biome to craft a bloody worm tooth, which gives 10% more melee damage. The things I do for minor stat bonuses. I am finally ready to fight Skeletron. It was a rainy night. I dodged the skulls by dashing left and right over and over, but I still got hit. When he reaches 80% health, he unleashes this attack. Bullets from every direction, halving my health, then spins and shoots purple bullets, then shoots flaming skulls at me, then his hands fire more purple, but this one I can dodge pretty well. Then he randomly chooses another attack. He chose the worst one, but as soon as I lose, I just try again. Fight him once more. This time on the 80% attack, I tried flying to the left to outrun it. It's kind of working. Nope, not at all. It's faster than me. But I stayed alive, and after more cycles, he was on half health. I was on less than half health. He's doing it again. Wait, that's different. Same result though. On the next run, I tried not running away from it, staying inside the box and dodging calmly. And I only got hit twice. That's an improvement before dying again. It's so hard. Why can't I get this? I keep dying. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Don't you care at all about this? You live in the world ruled by Yarim as well. You do keep dying, but you also keep respawning. Yeah, so what? Well, 
It's just a story, but in ancient times, when Terraria was ruled by Cthulhu, one of his servants dropped an artifact of his. Her name was Silva. She was killed immediately, but her son, seeing his mother's death, was filled with rage. He decided that day he was going to kill Cthulhu for what he'd done. All those watching saw a boy of seven years old with a copper short sword running at a god. The boy was killed immediately, but before people had time to look away and get back to work, they heard screaming. A boy that looked the same was running at the god, rage filling his lungs, and he was killed. Five seconds later, another boy ran screaming trying to cut the tremendous creature down, and he was killed again, and again, and again. People say that the planet itself gave this boy the power of respawning to combat the great evil of Cthulhu. He was still so weak though. Over years he trained, recruited allies. 50,000 years ago, he created the final stand. He was hunted and killed by Cthulhu thousands of times. But eventually, through sheer fucking will, he defeated Cthulhu, leaving only his eye alive so the god could witness his own death. With his job complete, the Chosen One disappeared. Now that another great evil has emerged, another Chosen One has been created. You. You are his descendant. So put on your music, raise your sword, and use your sheer fucking will to beat Skeletron and save Kyra. I put on my music and prepared. I went in, died again, but my doubts are no longer controlling me. I can focus. I got hit by the bottom, but then I dodged every other projectile. I realized all those on the side aren't important. They are just keeping me in a box. I only have to dodge the ones coming directly at me. I went back. I did the first phase flawlessly. In the 80% phase, I walked to the right slowly. By standing amongst the chaos, I got hit zero times. It was a perfect run. Then I started getting hit, but I was dodging more often. I felt calm. I felt alive. I ran into low gravity to confuse it. It's the wall phase. I've never made it through this. Ignore the box. Just dodge the flaming skulls. I missed. I'm on no health. I can do this though. It's in my blood. No! Am I not good enough? Did the planet make a mistake in choosing me? I don't want to stop, but I don't know how to win. Am I missing something? Wait, this song I've been listening to. I was only listening to part of it. I need to play all of it. Whatever goal it may be, you would trap that in your life. You don't chase after, oh, why am I not getting this? No, you say, I will get this. You gotta know in your head that you're the best to ever fucking touch it, bro. You're the best to ever do it. You, you just, you gotta know that shit. You don't think it. Oh, maybe I'm the best. No, you're the best to ever touch it. You can be whoever the fuck you want. I want to be the best! I want to win! I will defeat you! I dashed calmly. It's doing new attacks I've never seen. I dodged upward, chasing him. He resorted to the box attack, but I understand it now. I can stand amongst the chaos. I am so close to dying. If I get hit by one of these skulls, it's over. But I get to choose who I am, and I choose to be the hero. I choose to win. Kyra, I am on my way.